What's up, homies? Welcome to another episode of Heroes Reforged Reads a Comic Book. Today we're talking about Tech Jacket, Volume 1, The Boy from Earth, written by Robert Kirkman, and it's set in the larger Invincible universe, so it's one of these sort of spinoffs slash tie-ins. But, as we learned, Robert Kirkman and company, they did this book before Invincible. In case anybody's watching and they didn't read along with us, it's just really simply put, it is about a boy from Earth who gets this crazy piece of alien technology, kind of similar to Blue Beetle Jaime Reyes a little bit, kind of similar to that, this tech jacket that uh, gives him basically superpowers. He goes and fights in a war. He comes back home. He realizes he was gone for a long time. He's got to find his family. He does. He fights some other aliens. And then the series ended, and we'll see this character again in the main Invincible line. In fact, we already did when these characters, I believe, were fighting in volume five omnipotus, i think it was volume five it was the uh chrono key and they were fighting omnipotus yeah um, they, there was tech jacket with mm-hmm. brit now we're all caught up mm-hmm. on all the characters augustine mm-hmm. what are your overall thoughts on this six issues of tech jacket everything you just said were my thoughts on tech jacket <laughs> it happened uh <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just kidding. So this book, uh, I thought it was I thought it was a very paint by numbers comic book, not a lot of surprises, not a lot of development in the character. But I thought it was okay, because it was, for me, I'm a big stickler for the art. And this art in this book reminded me of like, old school kind of manga style drawing comic books, which I'm a huge fan of. I'm a huge fan of Akira. Uh, and that whole like Astro Boy style of like the early to to middle to mid 80s to 90s uh, anime. But I didn't dislike it as much as I dislike capes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was nothing. RP was nothing capes. That jumped out in Tech Jacket where we're going, no. oh, that's no. inappropriate. Or, oh, really? It's it's all pretty harmless. You yeah. Know, yeah. Kind of I, I think yeah. my favorite thing about this book, though, was the introduction by Kirkman. Uh, I think the spirit of the book is really what this is all about. He talks about how this is his first creator owned comic. This is what Mm -hmm. got his foot in the door for Invincible, not just Invincible for the walking dead. If there was no tech jacket, there would be no Invincible or walking dead. So I think the, the, the history and the, the spirit of this book is really what's important. And that's why I read it all the way through and I was like, okay, cool. Let's move on. I like tech jacket. I, I like everything he has and I think he's cool. Uh, but you know, we'll get into a little bit why it's kind of boring. Oh, okay. <laughs> Adam, what were your overall thoughts? I mean, just to kind of echo what Augustine was talking about in that introduction, which I thought was really great. And mm-hmm. I also liked the, in the paperback version of the collection, we have the, the sketches and the stuff at yeah. the end, yeah. mm-hmm. which is also always fun to go through because yeah. Robert there even says, I, I sort of decided to end the series at six issues. Right. We had already had a cover for issue seven and eight and mm-hmm. some story ideas of where we were going to go, which is mm-hmm. pretty interesting that we'll never get to see that. Yeah. But Robert also talks about how he hopes to one day be able to revisit the character. And I think it's kind of cool. And it fits that the character in the world was just absorbed into the Invincible universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Adam, what would you make of it? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Overall thoughts? I thought it was really fun. Okay, I started. Good, re- good. I started. I started reading, and I was like, "This, this feels like Green Lantern." Yes, and then he gets yeah. the tech jacket. I'm like, "This feels like Iron Man." I'm yeah. like, "These are these are characters from two worlds that I've really enjoyed, you know, reading about or learning who they are over the last like 10, 15, 20 years." So I thought it was really fun. It's a very low lift read. Like it's very much you're just Absolutely. kind of going through it. And yeah. I, I agree. I mean, I think it's very in terms of like the story. It is kind of vanilla, and we've already seen Mark Grayson go on these like sep- these similar types of adventures of like going to another planet to help that civilization defeat whatever thing that they're fighting but i really did enjoy some of the artwork as well and i thought it it feels like and i don't know if this was the intention but when i was watching tech jacket having the fights through space Mm -hmm. i could really visualize how that could look dynamic and unique in live action or Mm. in an motion animation Mm -hmm. so i really like that about it but yeah i mean it's it's it is a very much kind of a bare bone story and we don't get to learn too much about the characters and i feel like some of the stuff that we experience in this book there are echoes of that in invincible absolutely you know and and i so i think you know that it being kind of the first thing I think that's pretty natural for an artist as they experience life and they get older and things change and they make new friendships and all that stuff. It influences how you write, how you, if you're a director, how you direct all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can tell, you can see where the seeds are in this book for invincible and how 
Kirkman was able to take those ideas and those concepts and really be like, okay, but how do I elevate this from mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. a seven to like a 10? Mm-hmm. But I, I think this was like a really good primer. If you don't know anything about Invincible and you're like, okay, well, what's, can I get a little bit of a flavor? And you're like, well, read Tech Jacket first mm-hmm. because this yeah. is like a very PG mm-hmm. version of it. And then mm-hmm. get into Invincible, you're like, oh, I've now, I've now elevated or, or graduated to something that's really uh, not necessarily gritty, but a little bit more adult. That's a great way yeah. to put it. It, mm-hmm. it feels like Tech Jacket is middle school, and yeah. that's not a bad thing. It's just like that's where we're at, and then mm-hmm. you get to Invincible, and it does feel like high school going into college. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. thematically, mature level, all that that entails. I overall, you guys, I really like this book. Yeah? Four stars out of five for me. Nice. I had a fun time. It was I think, fun. I think simplicity is a good thing in this case. I just, I, I like you guys are saying, it's low lift. It is, it's fun and it was engaging enough for me where it was so zippy and and just fun. And Mm -hmm. the art I think is, EJ's art is the best thing about the book. Not to knock Robert Kirkman's writing, which I think is really good at structurally setting everything up. And the art elevates the writing for sure. mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think Robert's also good at the info dumps with this, how the, the world works and how the tech jacket works. I'm into all of that. So I really dug it. And I also really liked the entire time our main character is up in space, the entire time I was reading it and I was thinking, bro, he's going to get back and it's going to be like 10 years later. Or like, I I'm did like, the same thing. I'm like, yeah. what's going like, to happen? I, I gonna knew happen? it was going to be time pass. I knew it was yeah. going to be, mm-hmm. at first I thought it was going to be like 10 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. But then I he's like six was... months and I was like, damn, that's actually like, that's, that's, that's pretty like. That's a long uh, time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. But I, I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. It is. And I did appreciate that little Robert Kirkman sort of like a, 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 what's the word I'm thinking of? This is a consequence to your actions. This yeah, is, right. you know, your main character is going to go off into space for a long time and help people and help aliens and stuff. But like, what are the consequences for making that choice? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I think like you guys are saying, all of that is definitely further explored and invincible and kind of yeah. hit harder and it works. Here's, I think the, the book's biggest problem, depending on your own mileage, but like we have talked about this book now for close to 10 minutes and we haven't even said the main character's name. Yep. Right, that's, exactly. That's the biggest problem. Right. When we've talked about the first volume of Invincible right out the gate. We're like, Mark, Mark Grayson. Grayson, Mark this, Mark that. You immediately because, know it's so recognizable. And it's, yes. yeah, I don't know what it was about this book that I, I got to the end. I was like, what was the, what was the character's name again? And I, it, it's like, not yeah. Tech Jacket. Zach no. Thompson. It's Zach. Zach Thompson. Yeah. It's similar to Mark Grayson, Zach yeah. Thompson, this right. kind of superhero alter ego, you know, all American white kid name. This bam, bam, bam. This kind of what it feels like. Uh, not to say that I think Zach Scoop is Magoo. white or Mark is white or whatever. If they could be whatever, Scoop yeah. Magoo. Yeah. But it's uh, but I think that like whatever Robert Kirkman and uh, whatever he was doing in this book, maybe he sort of further developed or learned a lesson from it and carried it over to Invincible. Maybe not mm-hmm. because he talks about how they were both kind of coming out at the same time early. And eventually when Tech Jacket ended, when Tech Jacket ended, uh, Invincible kept going. And then the sales for Invincible picked up. Mm-hmm. around the mm-hmm. end of that mm-hmm. that uh, that first story arc with mm-hmm. Omni-Man where you know K- Kirkman's talking about oh, I had ideas and maybe they could have crossed over and done this and done that and and I have no doubt that if Tad Tech Jacket kept going it could have maybe turned into something really cool and, and so yeah. Too, yeah. much more refined yeah. and specific especially when it comes to Zach but in this first volume the thing about Invincible is in the first issue of Invincible I know who Mark Grayson is as a kid as a character I know what he cares about. I know what his priorities are. I know what kind of sense of humor he has. I know how he navigates through life. I got it. And it makes him really relatable. Mm -hmm. And so the end of that first issue, you know, he hears from the principal, you're not invincible, you know, and then he goes and does the thing and you're like, I'm all in. Zach is a great stand-in character. He's a template character. I didn't, even with him liking a girl and then kind of not being able to like walk her home and then having a best friend who's like this bigger guy than him and stuff, that was fun. Other than that, you know, at the end is when we get some stuff where he's talking to his dad yeah, and the yeah, secret yeah. that he shared with his dad because his dad like took out loans from the mob, which I'm like, that's interesting, but yeah. there like, wasn't what's the time. What's the backstory there? Tell me. Exactly. Yeah. What was happening with there that? There wasn't time. And I think Zach Thompson, I think the time for the series to really kind of halt everything and let us get to know the character is when he is up in space. Mm -hmm. We could explore his personality when how he's reacting to him being kidnapped, then learning that there's this huge war that he can make such a difference. And then him learning his powers and training, all of that stuff, I think would have been a great opportunity to be like, what is, what, what's important to Zach? How is he changing? You Mm -hmm. know, why does he all of a sudden think that this is really important? Why wouldn't he as a normal baseline American teenager be like, I have to go home. 
Why yeah. was he like, okay, I'll help you. I'm like, right. okay, yeah. that's interesting. Where did that context come from? Mark has the context of I'm the son of a superhero. Mm -hmm. I'm somewhat familiar with superhero world. So when he jumps into it and he's learning stuff, he knows what a team up is. He knows how to use his powers. He knows, you know, what, you know, he knows that he would need to go to a tailor to get a costume, all this kind of stuff. So that I think is the biggest flaw of the book is that Zach himself is kind of, Eh? yeah and that, i think also like yeah <laughs> there, there, there's like a thing about this book where it's like everything is good for the convenience of being good you know zach is kind of yeah. just like i'm just a good guy mm -hmm. his dad is kind of just a good guy even though he took money from the mob you know like everybody around him is just like a good guy the aliens are good guys mm -hmm. and i think that's the thing that adds the layers and diversity to invincible is his dad is not a good guy mm. yeah you know, that's true he's surrounded by people who are that's not true. good guys the, the truth is always in flux yeah exactly robot i, I think i say, think the but... key word you said there adam was convenient there was a line where he's where after one of the big space battles uh after uh, he's he's in space by himself his ship is destroyed and he's like how do i get back to the ship and his tech jacket turns into a ship which is really cool but then he goes oh this is convenient and i'm like yes this it whole is. story is it just kind of convenient man yeah. like just everything about this is convenient yeah. and i think to echo your point hector that was my biggest issue with this book is just that everything when he was asked for help, there was never, he was never wavering. He was never like, mm -hmm. ah, but I have homework and like, you know, I'm, the struggle I'm only, was never real. I'm only mm -hmm. a tween. Like he was, he was in like what middle school, like junior high school. I don't I know think, how old he I was. I think high school. Like, yeah, I think it was early years of high school. Well, he must he have been like one of those freshman little sophomore. freshmen in high school then. Like one of those little uh -huh. guys in the high school. The one that you picked on? <laughs> yeah. The, no, I was the little guy in high school. <laughs> um, but like he yeah. was that kind. And I don't imagine that a, a kid like him, would necessarily have the full confidence to enter an intergalactic alien battle totally without questioning anything. And totally. that was my biggest thing about this book. I, I, I should take it back. I don't think this book was boring. I don't think this book was boring at all, I, but it's, it's those, that kind of conflict that I was missing. You know, it was the yeah. internal struggle of this character. And I think if we it. had had a little bit more of that, I believe that this book would have hit all the right points for me because I'm such a stickler for the art that I, I was able to forgive a little bit of the of the just kind mm -hmm. of blah writing. So, I, I mean, overall, I wish we had a little bit more of Tech Jacket. I wish it wouldn't have ended when it did. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. you know, it, I'm, I'm, I'm listen, excited to get to the next episode of Listen, Invincible. boys, Tech Jacket comes back. They do more comics later. Mm -hmm. The important thing is, is now we're all caught up with where we are in the Invincible universe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the way I feel about Tech Jacket is I'm glad I read it. I dug it. Yeah. I had a good yeah, time. I think it's super kid friendly. And if Invincible and all the characters in the Invincible universe all had action figures, I'd still get the Tech Jacket action oh, figure. Yeah. Like, I'm hell happy yeah. that he's part of the set. You know what right. I mean? I think it's right. a cool little little corner of the little pocket of the universe. I, I would think be really sad cool. if there wasn't a Tech Jacket. Right. Do I need uh, all these bad guys action figures? No, I don't need all no, that. Do I need his supporting characters? Nah, I'm good. Not but at just all. Tech Jacket. Just give me tech jacket. That's it. Yeah. Cool yeah. design with the helmet and the armor. I agree. The, the design was amazing. The art was It, it was a really well designed character. Yeah. Really cool. But the time has come to announce our next book. And thankfully, we're heading back to the main Invincible line, oh, baby. So the next baby. volume we're reading is Invincible, volume seven, Three's Company. Boom, there it is. Don't look too long <laughs> at the cover. I don't want to give anything away. Okay, it's volume number seven. It's okay, I'm flashing it on screen right now, so. Three's Company, it's gonna be a doozy. And then, after that book, is maybe my favorite Invincible tie-in. It must be Spider-Man. <laughs> I mean, stay I tuned to say. the next stay episode tuned, stay tuned to the next but <laughs> invincible volume seven is what we're reading so go grab it digitally order a physical copy support your local comic book shop safely if you can join mm -hmm. our discord mm -hmm. where we have awesome conversations about invincible comics and everything else check out our patreon where we're offering a bunch of rad stuff including we're definitely going to be watching godzilla versus kong when it comes out march 31st live with our patrons you guys can watch us watch it all together live we did it with wonder woman 1984 it was a blasty blast and that's pretty much it so until next time yeah See you later. Bye. Bye. Oh, read a comic book. Read a comic book. Read a comic book.